With the Mark IV frame complete, we'll now move on to building up the X axes, ready for the extruder. So on we go with the X carriage assembly. We start with our printed parts box and locating the X axis and X carriage bag. In particular, we begin the X axis assembly with the two 3D printed parts shown here, color being dependent upon your chosen option, of course. Starting with the larger of the two pieces, larger since the X axis motor will be attaching directly to this part, begin by inserting four M3 nuts into the four available holes on the back side. These nuts need to go down to the bottom of each hole. Bear in mind these parts are 3D printed, so try not to apply too much pressure since you could end up breaking the part. Instead, insert the nut, then use any M3 screw on the opposite side and tighten, which will in turn pull the nut down into the recess for you. Of course, if you do use this method, remove the screw after the nut is in place, but you'll then have all the nuts firmly down the bottom of each recess. With these in place, it's time to install an M3 square nut into the slot in between the four nuts just installed. As usual, feel free to use the Allen key to clean out the recess before inserting the square nut and using the same Allen key to push the nut down into place. Next, insert an M3 by 25 screw from the side and into the square nut we just installed. Take care to not over tighten the screw completely. Instead, keep the screw head aligned with the top surface of the part. Next, we need to install two M3 by 16 screws, one into the bottom of the plastic part we're currently working on and one on the opposite end, so from the top. Finally, still looking down from the top, we need to insert two M3 square nuts into these two locations. One nut slides in from the side, while the other slides in from the inner side, a little more fiddly but easily doable with the Allen key helping to push into place. Take care not to push too far and ending up damaging the part since the opposite side is also quite thin. That's our X-axis motor end part prepared and we can now move on to the opposite X-axis idler end which we need to prepare in a similar fashion. So with the idler in hand, proceed to install two M3 nuts into the back side. Again, use any M3 screw to pull the nut into place if you struggle to push it in directly. And again, do not over tighten any screws when it comes to plastic parts since they'll be easily damaged. With those in place, proceed to insert two M3 square nuts into the side of the part using an Allen key to push down into place. And with a quick visual check through the corresponding holes to confirm everything is lined up correctly. Next, we insert two M3 by 16 screws, one from the bottom and one from the top, taking care to ensure it's the correct length screw, of course. And finally, it's the two M3 square nuts in the top opening, one from the outside and one from the inner opening, again taking care not to push too hard since the opposite 3D printed walls are thin and can be easily damaged with excessive force. With both X carriage assembly end parts now prepared with all nuts and screws in place, we need to get our bearings installed. So our first set of bearings here, and we're specifically using the larger 55mm bearings for this step, Proceed to remove them from any packaging before using a paper towel or cloth to wipe off any excess machine oil and grease that may be in place since manufacture. Before installation, we need to apply some grease to the inside of the bearings. So we'll need our small tube of grease, which looks small, but it's plenty enough for this entire build, as well as the larger 10 mm applicator, since we're using the larger bearings. So remove the cap, use it to pierce the foil seal before installing the applicator to the neck. At this point, I like to squeeze the tube in order to get the grease into the applicator, just enough so that you can start to see the holes fill, after which we're ready to slide on our first bearing. So with the bearing in place, turn the applicator clockwise very slightly until you feel some resistance, and then gently squeeze the tube to apply some grease. You don't need to go crazy here, just a very small amount is all that's needed. After which the bearing can be removed, rotated and the same process applied from the opposite end. The aim here is to get a very thin layer of grease along the four rows of balls inside the bearing. So again, no need to go crazy with the grease at all here, after which any excess can be wiped away. Repeat the same process with the second bearing. So insert, rotate, squeeze, before doing the same on the opposite end. 
With bearings prepared, grab the previously prepared x-axis motor end printed part, so the larger of the two, and proceed to place a bearing into the center. Rotate the bearing so the rows of balls inside are in the shape of an X. This will help by applying even pressure across the rod that will be installed later. The bearing will be secured into place using a bearing clip, although before installing, notice there are two rectangular indentations on the inside of the clip. Use these to line up and install a rubber pad into both pockets, simply by pressing it down into position, after which we're ready to install on top of the bearing. Note that one end of the clip incorporates a raised lip. This needs to go towards the bottom of the bearing as it will be used to keep the bearing securely in place. Following the official manual, you now slide the clip up and onto the bearing, although very carefully since with the tight tolerances, it's very easy to deform the rubber pads. I personally found I could safely clip the cover into place, very carefully so as to not break the plastic, now being sure the rubber pads are completely straight. Either way, once in position, secure into place with four M3 by 30 cap head screws. Install all four loosely to begin with until everything is in place, and tighten down by securing each screw in a diagonal pair. Repeat the same process with the idler printed part too. So place the bearing into position, remembering to rotate so that the inner bearings are in the X position, after which the clip, complete with rubber pads inserted, can slide over the top in the correct orientation or carefully clip into place, whichever you prefer, so that the lip remains at the bottom. The main difference here is with the screw lengths. Loosely install two M3 by 30 screws into the left side and two M3 by 18 screws into the right side. Finally, tighten down in the typical diagonal pairing fashion just so that they're nice and snug. Do not over tighten as you could end up snapping the 3D printed plastic part. With both sections complete, we're ready to proceed to the next steps, which involve connecting these two parts together and constructing the X axis. We start by greasing more bearings, this time it's the three smaller units. Before applying grease, though, wipe any excess oil away from the body of the bearing, after which you'll need to grab a permanent marker. Holding the bearing so that you can visibly see the bottom two rows of balls inside, Mark the top centre of the bearing. This will help with orientation when we come to the installation of other parts later in the build. Repeat the same process on the remaining two bearings. So it's the same greasing process as before now, although this time we're using the smaller of the two applicators instead. So for each bearing we insert, rotate to a little resistance and apply some grease, although this time enough so that you just start to see it ooze out from the opposite end before wiping away any excess from the ends, and then go ahead and repeat the same process for the remaining two bearings. With bearings prepared, we're ready to install our first set of steel rods. You'll have three sets with varying lengths, for now we want to reach for the longest set. So with these to hand, proceed to give them a quick wipe down with a paper towel to remove any machine oil and grease, before inserting the end of each rod carefully into the x-axis idler trying to keep them as straight as possible so as to not damage the 3D printed part. These need to be pushed in as far as they'll go. You'll find a handy viewing hole on the side of the idler where you can check to ensure the rod has been fully inserted. With those in place, slide three bearings onto the smooth rods, one bearing on the upper rod and two bearings on the lower. Orientation of the markings we created doesn't matter at the moment, but be very gentle and careful so as to not dislodge any of the small ball bearings inside. If you lose any more than three or four of the tiny ball bearings from inside, you'll need to purchase complete replacements, so slow and steady is recommended here. So with the rods completely inserted into the idler and bearings correctly in place, proceed to wipe any excess grease from the rod ends before feeding the ends through the x-axis motor assembly. Same principle as before, going in as straight as possible and ensuring the rod ends are firmly all the way in, using the inspection holes to check the ends are touching the screws previously inserted. Note orientation of both ends here, so the bearings previously installed are on the same side as each other and each end is facing upwards in this direction. Back to the 3D printed parts box next and we're after the X carriage black coloured parts this time as we're now ready for the X carriage assembly next, another large 3D printed part. So with that to hand proceed to insert three M3 square nuts into the top. 
These can be a little fidgety and tough to get into place, but using a small Allen key to push them down into position helps. In essence, you want them in far enough to clear the holes. Next, we want to insert another 5 M3 square nuts around the bottom. So two on one bottom side, two on the opposite bottom side, and the final directly into the bottom. Far enough so that the holes line up nicely. And finally, two standard M3 nuts into the front side of the assembly. Again, these can be difficult to push into place, so use any of the M3 screws inserted into the opposite end to pull the nuts back into position nice and easy. Remembering to remove the screws after doing so, of course. So that's all nuts now in place, and we can proceed to insert a single M3 by 10 cap head screw into the opposite side. The screw must protrude through the entire part so that a hex spacer can be installed on the inserted screw and tightened down into place. Notice the hex spacer will key into the correctly shaped cutout in the assembly and not rotate. We have a further two hex spacers to install here, so feed a further two M3 by 10 screws in from the back in these locations, and attach hex spacers from the front side, securing the spacers by tightening the screws just as we did with the first spacer, ensuring all screws are relatively snug. We're ready to move on to the X carriage clip next, so with that to hand, proceed to insert two rubber pads into the rectangular recesses on the inside, just like we did earlier. With that prepared, we're ready to install the X carriage to the X axis assembly prepared earlier. So begin by placing the X carriage assembly face down in this orientation and place the X axis assembly on top so that the two bottom bearings on the lower rod sit into the recesses towards the bottom of the X carriage, leaving the single upper rod bearing outside of the assembly for the moment. Be careful with orientation here. You'll want the back sides of the X axis assembly facing upwards as in my example. Now slide both bottom bearings all the way into the pockets in the X carriage while aligning them with the outer surface of the carriage. Then rotate both bearings so that the markings we made earlier are facing downwards. This way when raised the rod ends will be resting evenly onto two rows of the bearings with that done, cover the bearings with the X carriage clip and secure it using four M3 by 10 screws. Do not fully tighten the screws at the moment, just enough to hold everything in place. We're going to get the X axis motor installed next, so we'll need the X axis motor itself, which is clearly labeled, as well as the pulley that will attach to the motor shaft. Begin by inserting a single M3 by 10 screw into the side of the motor plastic bracket lining it up with the edge of the plastic protrusion. The x-axis motor will be installed here. Notice how the motor wires are facing downwards. So flip the unit over and secure into place by inserting three M3 by 18 screws into the three available corners. You'll want to only slightly tighten the screws at this point since we'll be adjusting them later on. So just enough to get the motor in place for now and to ensure we have space for adjustment, Position the screws so that they are on the inner end of the oval holes. At this point when handling the entire assembly, you'll want to make sure the tension screw we just inserted on the X motor side doesn't fall out. Next comes the motor pulley. Just like we installed the pulley on the Y axis motor, it's the same process here. So rotate the motor shaft until the flat side is pointing out of the opening between the plastic bracket. After which we can drop the pulley into place onto the shaft, being careful to ensure it goes on teeth and facing downwards. In order to position correctly, use an Allen key across the top surface to align the pulley so it's level, before tightening the first grub screw against the flat edge of the motor shaft, followed by the second grub screw. With that completed, we'll now install the X-axis belt, so we'll need the belt itself as well as the idler pulley and the small pin. Guide the belt around the pulley, and with the pulley clamped in this way, insert it into the X end idler plastic assembly. Until the hole in the centre of the pulley and the hole in the plastic align enough to insert the retaining pin, after which you can pull lightly on the belt to secure the position of the pulley. You may see the pin in the hole slide inside the part. Once the pulley is secured, the pin is not visible at all. Back on the X carriage now, still leaving the upper bearing free, insert the upper end of the belt into the groove in the X carriage, using an Allen key to push the end of the belt all the way inside. 
Once in place, the lower end of the belt can be pushed through the belt channel in the X carriage before guiding it around the teeth end of the motor pulley and back across to the X carriage. This end can now be pushed into the opposite groove in the carriage, again as far as possible using an Allen key to help. Note that the belt must not be too loose, certainly not enough to sag. With that done, we'll fine tune tension a little later. So for now, we can proceed to place the upper bearing into the recess in the carriage, noting that the mark we made on the bearing earlier should be facing outwards towards you. Almost complete with the X axis assembly now, so at this point, stop and move the X carriage back and forth a few times in order to check that the movement is completely smooth. Once verified, proceed to tighten the screws on the X carriage clip that we left a little loose earlier on in a diagonal fashion, so upper left, lower right, upper right, and lower left. Again, move the X carriage several times to both sides and check the movement. It won't be completely free moving and you may feel some slight resistance due to the belt turning the motor, but otherwise it should be relatively smooth. And that's it, X axis is now complete. Give it a quick final check to ensure all is exactly as shown here, including the orientation of the plastic end brackets, the bearing orientation, motor orientation, with the cables exiting downwards, even down to the direction and placement of the motor pulley. If all looks good, we can proceed to the next section, the Z-axis.